use the disk method to verify the volume of the sphere of radius r, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And then we'll use it to verify the volume of the right circular cone with base radius r and height h, which is pi thirds h r squared. Let's take a look at the sphere. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to take the area above the x-axis and under the circle of radius r centered at the origin, and we're going to rotate this around the x-axis. So I need to know the function for the top part of the circle. Well, if I have x squared plus y squared equals r squared, because we're using radius r, which is fixed, then I'll have y equals plus or minus square root of r squared minus x squared. And I use the positive one because we only care about the stuff above the x-axis. Let me fix an x, and we'll pull out the disk that goes with the section at x. Okay, so we have this. So we note the radius of this disk is just going to be the height, which is the same as the value of the function when I put in x. So the area of this disk is going to be given by pi of y squared, but y equals square root of r squared minus x squared. So the area of the disk at x is going to be pi r squared minus x squared. If I want the entire volume, I'm going to integrate this function from minus r to r, which will get me every disk of ax dx. So that's my volume formula. Let's see what happens. So we're going to take the volume is the integral from minus r to r. We have pi r squared minus x squared for our area. I can pull the pi out in front. Then this we know how to take the antiderivative of. So r squared is a constant, so that's just going to be multiplied by x, and then the antiderivative of x squared is add 1, flip it over, x cubed over 3. Now I want to evaluate at r and minus r, take the difference. That gives me r cubed minus r cubed over 3, which is 2 thirds r cubed. Over here, Minus r cubed plus r cubed over 3 gives me minus 2 thirds r cubed. The minus sign cancels out to give me another 2 thirds r cubed. So adding that together gives me 4 thirds r cubed. And then we have the pi in the front. And then we see our answer. Let's take a look at the right circular cone. Here, I'm going to put the cone on its side just so we can use the variable x instead of y. So let's take a look. We have, for the top part of the cone, a straight line. Okay, It goes through 0, so all I need is the slope to get the equation. The slope is just the rise over run. So we have rise r, run h. So we're looking at the equation y equal to r over h times x. Same idea. I pull out the disk at x. Its radius is just going to be the y value, but that's just going to be r over h times x. And the area is then going to be pi times the radius squared, but the radius is equal to y. So we're looking at pi r squared x squared over h squared. We stick this into our volume formula. Here, we're going to integrate from 0 to h. So I take the antiderivative here. Let's note pi r squared h squared is a constant. So I can bring that out in front. So all I need to do now is find the antiderivative of x squared. So add 1, flip it over. We're going to put in h and 0. So that's just going to become 1 third h cubed. And that gives me pi r squared h cubed over 3 h squared. The h squared goes away. The top becomes h. So I have pi r squared h over 3, and that verifies my formula for the cone.